All right, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the trial episode of the photo editing showdown. And tonight we have, uh, let's see, about five, six competitors. And we need to mute. Tonight we have Shirley. <laughs> All right. And. Uh, <laughs> So, all right, so we're doing the first episode, episode the first trial episode. We have, uh, tonight we have six competitors, five or six competitors, and we have six images. We're going to start off by introducing you to some of the people and getting a little bit of their uh, thoughts. They've already downloaded the pictures. They're going to give us some of the thoughts about uh, what they might try to do. They will have one hour to edit the same six pictures and again this is all strategy so they could choose to just edit one or two pictures really well they could edit all six in fact maybe we'll we'll see what their strategy might be and maybe they're just gonna lie to us so that everyone else does the opposite and then they'll do something different I don't care it's whatever they want to do they can use any software they want they can do anything they want they can they can composite um, it has to maintain pretty much be the same picture, so they can't just like uh, take a little bit of the picture into some other awesome. It needs to be that picture. Um, and 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 so uh, anyone watching live, feel free to ask some questions that I'll use as I'm doing the play-by-play. -play. And if you. Uh, if you want to be involved the next time that we do it for the first episode, you know, there'll be prizes and everything, uh, let me know. Put it on the commentary. Write, if you're watching live, write yo on the little uh, commentary as well so we, so we know who we're talking to. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Let's uh, start off. I know, Scott, you were talking about, uh, well, you were talking about uh, some of your strategy a little bit earlier as we were uh, doing our little pre-game meeting. You want to tell us what you're what you're thinking about doing? Sure, I'm a conceptual portrait person, so I'm going to gravitate more obviously toward the uh, my strategy is to gravitate more to the bride picture right, right off the bat, and then yeah. uh, I'm thinking I might uh, might tackle the picture of the uh, on the mountain here next, and uh, oh, see where I go from there. Jolly good. Are you gonna? Composite the bride and the mountain together. There you go. Great a mountain strass. Yes. All oh, right. 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 I, I'm going to go for more of a painterly look because that's uh, kind of what I'm in the mood for. So let's see what uh, what happens. All right, Ricardo. So what's the scoop? What do you think? I'm an amateur photographer, so I'm all over the map. And so yeah. I when I just like when I shoot, I go for this you know spray and pray. Uh, approach. Yeah. We're gonna do the same with this uh, with this challenge. We're we're gonna try to do all six, and I'm gonna Oops. just like uh, do a little bit of everything. We're gonna do some black and whites. So we're gonna do some HDR, and then we're gonna do some just straight up in Lightroom editing. So Ricardo, which one are you thinking you might be the most excited about? Which one is piqued your interest right now? I think the little girl on the runway is probably the first one I'm gonna work on. Um, yeah. It's a challenging lighting situation there on the runway. I think I'm going to fix that by just cropping it down. All right. Okay. And then I'm going to move on to uh, El Capitan and probably, um, uh, I'm not sure what my third one might be. Okay. Randall, tell us what you're thinking. What well, you're um, editing in what software? Um, I'm going to be using Lightroom and Photomatix. I'm going to okay. HDR a couple of the landscape ones. Um, I'm kind of excited about the silhouette shot. And uh, yeah, I'm going to plan to get to all six because I normally edit pretty quickly. So this is, I feel like it's plenty of time to get everything done. But if you get done early, good. if you get done early, you'll have to well, banter with me, do some yeah. commentary. Yeah, exactly. I just plan to get just a little bit of everything. Just kind of, okay. just kind of have some fun with it. And uh, for for anyone uh, for after we are done, we will put the they will email me to the images, and we'll put them all up on the new Google Plus page, Photo Editing Showdown, which I'll put a link there as soon as we get them started, uh, so that you guys can see them all. Now, Mark, let's jump over to you. Hi. 
So, what you thinking? Well, since I'm primarily a landscape photographer, I'm going to be focusing on uh, that image of El Cap first, and then probably the uh, shot of uh, Benton Hot Springs there on <coughs> 120. Um, I am also very intrigued by the image of the bride on the staircase. So I'll be, um, I've got some ideas for what I want to do with that. Um, I don't know that I'll, I'm, I tend to spend a lot of time on images. I'm going to be using Lightroom 3.3. Um, hopefully I'll get to, um, to all six, uh, but I may just concentrate on uh, doing real strong work on uh, a limited number if, if that's what my time looks like. You'll start concentrating on the one that no one is talking about that they're doing, right? So that it'll yes. be easy winnings. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so we also have Shirley here, who's going to be uh, throwing in a little uh, wild card here. She's spicing things up. What what software are you you on there, Shirley? Shirley, are you are you on mute? Jump back in with us, Shirley. Are you on mute? Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, we can. Yes. Can you hear you? No, I'm not. Can you hear me? Yes, we can Does hear it you. Does it work? They can't hear me. I can no, hear we you. can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, wait. There it is. Okay. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm not. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yep. sorry. Wait, yeah, wait. so today I'm going to be on Picasso, and the editing philosophy for tonight is to keep the photos as true to life as possible and to make it a bit better using Picasso and I'm using it for the first time since my Hangout computer does not have Photoshop but Picasso itself has some powerful editing features that are useful for light editing. Now Shirley I think maybe in the background you might have the video going of the Hangouts on air and so there was some feedback. That's what it sounded like. Somebody has it. Maybe it's maybe it's Helen. I think it's Helen. Oh, sorry. Uh, it was her. That's it couldn't be me because I don't I don't have. Alright, let me mute myself. Um, you can go on. I'll try to figure this out. Okay. I have multiple okay, sorry, computers Helen. on. Hold on. All right, let's go. Over Tell me because I've got I've got earbuds on my computers. Okay. Okay, we're, we're over at uh, Helen. I know that you're just going to try to play along your computer. Some a little bit of technical issues. If you drop in, drop out, that's fine. Uh, no problem. <laughs> uh, you can still, even if even if you do end up dropping out, still continue to do it uh, for, the, for the hour, um, and we'll get them up on uh, the folder, the gallery, anyways. But let's hear your thoughts about okay. the set of six for tonight? Well, first of all, I really like this uh, silhouette. I think it's it's really beautiful. I'm going to try to get some colors out on that. And I like the bride on the stairs. I'm going to try and, and show up her face and her personality on that. And I really like the mountain also. I'm intrigued with the night, the night shot as well with the tree. I'm not sure about that one. i try as best I can. I, I normally start out with Lightroom and I finish up in Photoshop. Uh, if my computer can handle it, <laughs> I'll go through and, and, and fix these up. I'm going to try to not do HDR. <laughs> and, I, and I ask everyone uh, viewing with me that this is considered a trial run, not because there's ne it's necessarily a trial for you. Well, it's easier for you guys. It's going uh, to be a trial for me to, to learn how to do this play-by-play, -play, and I'll have to get my play-by-play -play voice, ladies and gentlemen and try to get uh, good at this so that when we do the very first one, the very first official one, I am an awesome, awesome at it. And we'll have to get someone else to help, you know, the man on the floor for the color commentary. All right. So uh, I think uh, we are about ready to start. How about that? Any final right. questions? Any final thoughts? What how, much time, how much time are we going to have for the whole thing? Uh, uh, you, everyone had said that they wanted an hour for this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think an hour sounds good. Does anybody win? Okay. <laughs> Does anybody win? Do we win? <laughs> is, there, is there extra points if you finish fast? 
So yeah. Ferrari, right? Is that what you said? Did you say Ferrari? <laughs> okay. It is a new dance called the Ferrari. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is 11.47 Mountain Standard Time, and we shall begin the first ever Google Plus Photo Editing Showdown. Ready and... That was go. Oh. <laughs> First, I see some action is Scott here. He jumped right into it. Is my he is zooming in. He is getting out his white brush or white balance brush. Obviously going, it's, it's definitely a crooked image, so going to, uh, to crop that in, get it straight, move forward, not ahead, try to whip it, whip it good <laughs> into shape. Okay, now he's brightening up. He is using Lightroom 3, by the way. And no. now, now what? Now what? Photoshop? Oh, too much, too much. What is going on? I think we're going we're gonna to leave him for a moment, and uh, we'll probably have quite the surprise when we get back. <laughs> uh, but let's, uh, let's move on over. I see some action going on over with with Ricardo over here. I saw some dialogue boxes going up. Ricardo is working first on on image number three. Yeah, I figured I can do this one faster. So already I see some changes here. Uh, I am... Uh, so let me tell you this. We're moving on to uh, Silver Effects Pro. Oh, okay. So I don't recognize Silver Effects Pro. This is, this is different. I, I've never used Silver Effects Pro. Tell me what you uh, what happens in Silver Effects Pro. Well, the nice thing with Silver Effects is that I'm going to be able to use a preset to get ahead to get a jump on the black and white, and then just make some manage adjustments from there. Okay, all is fair. Presets, direct edits. I mean, you might get more kudo points if you know it's all like from scratch, but no one will even know when we post them up. So. So yeah, already, you can see that I'm already pretty close to where I want to be just with this. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on over. Randall's got a dialog box open, so it means he's doing yeah. something. Um, I'm gonna start with some HDR on this mountain here. And okay, so you're jumping into Photoshop as well from Lightroom. Um, yeah, that was an accident. I'm actually going to manually bracket it here in. Lightroom, and then open up those exposures in Photomatics and see what okay, I can come so up with. What do you mean by manually bracket it? Well, like since it's just the one ex you have the one exposure here, yeah. so then I'm gonna I'm gonna save a zero, a minus one, a minus two, a plus one, a plus two, and open you're saving them all to Photomatics. Oh, yep, I'm just gonna, yep, yep, and then I'm gonna. Play with it from there. This will be probably the longest, the longest okay. edit. So I'm going to get it out of the way first. Nice. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll come back probably when you're a little bit further down on that road. Uh, yeah. We want to jump to see what Mark is doing here. He is also working on that image of uh, El Capitan. Yo no soy marinero. Soy capitan. Soy capitan. So what I've done so far is added a couple of. Uh, graduated filters to try to balance out some of the exposure. Okay. One and here at the top of Dr. Three. Three. I see you've uh, you've done some stuff over there on uh, oh no the you that's what your uh, your uh, your graduated filter you've been working yeah. on uh, you have it on brightening. Okay, so you're doing the brightening the, the bottom area. Yeah, I'm just going to light up that bottom a little bit. It was kind of heavy in the shadow. Okay. That'll let, me pull up, that'll let me pull some color up in it in just a little bit. After, after I get through going through uh, some of you guys, I'm going to go back through and uh, spend a couple of moments on showing them the original untouched pictures. Uh, but first of all, let's go over to, to Helen, who seems to be doing all right with her uh, computer here. So far, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and uh, you know, I think a lot of people are working on uh, this image because it is the first one. This is image number one. 
uh, we can see what she's doing over there. She's she's going uh, deciding between detail and lens correction. She went with lens correction. She's gonna take it. She's gonna make a black and white version as well. Okay. So virtual copy, which if you're if you're listening at home, uh, virtual copy is control apostrophe for the shortcut. All right. So let's jump over to the exciting uh, Shirley Lowe. Uh, I don't know that it, she has to unmute herself to <laughs> be able to talk. She is on uh, the picture of the little girl, which is image number five. First time on editing in Picasa, your thoughts. It's pretty interesting. There's a lot of uh, controls to use for, there's crop and moving the sliders around, so I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, for the Al Capitan one, it's pretty cool how you could do sepia pretty easily and move the controls around to get the right mood. And I'm uh, kind of done with that one already. I, I, I forgot to, uh, Sandra Parlo watching uh, let me know that I forgot to say at the beginning, Let's get ready to rumble! Sandra, you better love me for that one. Alrighty. Okay, so we uh, were on, and I want to talk to you, Shirley, a little bit more about what you are, uh, your thoughts on uh, on using this for the first time, but we're, we're going to jump back and see what, what Scott's been doing on this image. He is uh, up close. He's in Photoshop, if I'm uh, not mistaken. So here's my before and after. Nice. So we've darkened up quite a bit on the on the front. We have a lot of uh, I've added a lot of brushwork to the stairs. Oh yeah, it's got yeah. a lot more painterly look to the image. Um, still not done with uh, working on the bride yet, but. Uh, got the, I got the rest of the image where I want it, so I'm happy here. I'm happy with the freeze, brighten that up substantially. Okay. Uh, kind of pop that up a bit, remove yeah. a lot of the yellow from the image. Okay, so is there, if I'm not mistaken, is there some uh, color going on on the bottom of that bottom stair? Yeah, this is a linear burn, so it's bringing out the color that was already in the stair, but we're just bringing it through a little bit, so okay. we have a, we have color consistency throughout the image, but yeah, got a nice texture. Nice. So what are you thinking about the bride? Uh, I'm going to pop the contrast in the hair right away. Uh, that's what I tend to like to do, bring out the details in the dress and then move on to the next. I do need to remove the texture from the bride, uh, pieces of the bride anyway, uh, from the painterly effect. Oh, that there, the oh, yes, I am seeing it now that we're closer. Thank you for that, for yep. moving in closer. You do have a, a texture. Where did you get that from? Uh, many of them I have made myself, uh, just uh, in uh, Art Rage or Painter or uh, from the museum, and I take my camera. <laughs> and now, do you mask out uh, the texture in certain areas? Right. Yeah. My plan is to go through and, and mask out uh, areas where the texture is. But there's more than one. There are several layers that have the texture on it, so I've got to find the one that's going to have the best effect for the bride to bring that back. So. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to come back to you in just a little bit. I'm going to go back to me. I'm going to share my screen here. So uh, we're going to go over the pictures real fast. So here uh, was, I, I went through, uh, in the future, we're going to be uh, looking from pictures from lots of different sources, from lots of different people, uh, maybe from uh, each of the different competitors or from submissions. Or obviously we can continue to use my own pictures. In this case, since the trial run, I just kind of put it together. Today, uh, we were using a bunch of pictures I've taken in the last week or so. And so this was, uh, this was taken, this first one, El Capitan, was taken on uh, the January 1st, New Year's Day. Uh, and uh, I, I can't remember, I think I was uh, in the car for this one. Uh, had just a moment as we stopped at this uh, valley overlook. I, and I had about three or four different pictures from this spot, and I picked one that I, I, I really didn't like too much. So I really wanted to see what people <laughs> thought of it. Uh, I mean, the more I look at it, the more potential I see with it, especially with you guys working on it. Uh, this one was from the next morning. Uh, it was... Uh, 
down in the valley in Yosemite, uh, up towards the mountains. Now, now Ricardo's been to Yosemite quite a bit. He might uh, be familiar with what the name of this mountain is. Uh, let's see what he's looking at. Uh, I can just bring it up in my. Yes. So which one is it? But it was a, it was a long exposure, 30 seconds long, taken at f 1.8 at ISO 30 to 100. Oh, so man, we're getting a lot of lot of stars in there. Is this uh, across from El Cap or to the right of El Cap? You know, I can't even remember too well where it was. Uh, just <laughs> to the left of this is the Yosemite Falls. Oh, it's to the left of this is Yosemite Falls. Okay. Um, oh, I forget the name of this area. Uh, this is just left of, I think, so the Royal actually, Arches area. I think Yosemite Falls is in this picture. It's yeah, you can see it on the left, right there. Yeah. Falls, yeah, you can see it. So Yosemite Falls area, but it's to the right of it. It's got a name. I forget what it is. And uh, here we go. Uh, Mark is best talk to us about uh, this next picture because he loves this location, Benton Hot Springs. <laughs> Tell us about Benton Hot Springs, Mark. If you could take a moment from your from your editing. Yeah, sure. We'll even Benton go Hot to Springs. Story. Is a uh, is a very old town in uh, eastern California. It was established uh, right around the time of the gold rush, I think 1852. It's at the end of uh, the eastern terminus of uh, California State 120, which runs from the Bay Area up over Tuolumne Meadows. A lot of people think that Highway 120 ends when it gets to 395 over by. Mona Lake, but it actually uh, continues on east uh, over to US 6, and that section there from 395 to US 6 and 120 is actually one of my favorite drives in California, and it ends here at Benton Hot Springs, um, just, a, just a really neat part of California. Uh, there's actually a hot springs there where you can uh, soak. And um, I've been here a number of times. I really like that area. Oh, nice. What do you mean to take you uh, too long from uh, your editing? Uh, no. But no. I, I go through there on my way from Yosemite over the over the pass, and then I go through Nevada yeah. by going through Benton Hot Springs and then catching the six for a little while and up through uh, Honopah. Mm -hmm. Do Tonopah, oh, right. yeah, that's the way. That's the way I usually go to Death Valley okay. when I am in eastern. Uh, when I go to the eastern Sierra and then decide to head over to Death Valley, I'll do that same drive through Tonopah and just go south on 95, like you were going towards Vegas, and then cut off at Scotty's Junction and come into into Death Valley from the north. All right. Next image that we have, uh, we saw Scott working on this. This is a bride. Uh, there's quite a few from this shoot as well. A bunch of different expressions. I thought I'd take the more uh, kind of more tough and rough expression here. See what people uh, did with it. This was at the Utah State Capitol building, and uh, this is up on the stairs. In the background, you you see it says House of Representatives. So. On one side of the Capitol is the House of Representatives, and on the other side is the Supreme Court. And all throughout, there's lots of lots of uh, offices for the different people that work there. Uh, next, we have uh, just a few days ago. I was at a bridal show, taking pictures for a wedding dress designer. Now, this isn't uh, her stuff. This was one of the other. Uh, clothing companies that was there at this bridal show. Um, uh, so I have no idea who this little girl is. Uh, but I thought everyone likes and says, aw, look at the little cute girls. And so we were doing that. It was a, It's a little soft. A little, uh, the lighting situation's a, a little hard. And I just wanted to see what people would be doing with it. So there we go. And last but not least, image number six. It, as you can tell, we have done uh, three portrait type images and three landscape type images to start this first. The trial 
edition of the Photo Editing Showdown. And here we have a, uh, a friend of mine, a filmmaker, that asked for some pictures to uh, help with his ever bur burgeoning uh, uh, business. And he has lots and lots of subscriber and is putting a face to his channel, a channel of over 150,000 subscribers to his YouTube channel with many, many uh, of his films going to the viral level, million plus. And, uh, and so he needed some pictures, and we got a bunch of him with his personality, and this is one of the very few that I did as a silhouette, um, not a complete silhouette, and so we'll see what people do with that. Uh, but he's got his camera, he's got his boom mic, and uh, it was at sunset. So, and by the way, anyone watching and wants to ask any questions and uh, see more of a particular person and cheer them on and, uh, you know, are you team, team Mark, Team Randall, Team Ricardo, Team Scott, Team Shirley? And we do have a drop. Helen wasn't able to, to, to stick in with her computer, but she might be back in later and maybe she still continue to edit. Oh, here, look, we have Scott going into, uh, what is this, Scott? What do we got going on? You doing some, uh, some fancy stuff here? Yep, just finishing up. There we go. Scott's very fancy. Scott is very <laughs> fancy. Oh, Scott with fancy pants. Scott, yeah. you, I don't think, are allowed to show this to my bride. <laughs> you know, he did a, what, Scott did a, did a texture, and now he's got weird colors going on. I, I will not. I, I, don't even, I don't even want to look. So, the expression a little bit on the face, uh... Uh, we worked the dress a little bit, added some uh, dodge and burn to the image. Were you in, uh, what were you in just a moment ago? Uh, gradient map. Okay, gradient map. So gradient map is um, used to add, a, uh, now this is something I do stylistically to my images. I like a little bit of blue in the, in the darker areas of the image, for instance. Okay. And there's a couple different ways to add that. One is with the solid color adjustment layer and then bring it down to the opacity about 4%. Another method is to add a gradient map. So in this case, um, you, the, the way the gradient map works is the darkest part of the image is represented here and the lightest parts are represented here. And what you do is select what you want. Uh, if this is at 100%, the image will appear to be blue and white or blue and cream in this case. Uh, the default one is black and white. Um, but I have it reversed. This is how it normally appears. So if I bring in, uh, I have one I created that I use on a lot of my images, which is this blue and cream color, which I like quite a bit, and then just reduce the opacity. It adds a nice tonal image. It removes yellow, which I think this image has a problem with a lot of yellow. I've actually already removed quite a bit of the yellow, uh, but I, I wanted to pull a little bit more out and then bring in a little bit of blue, which is kind of one of my signature styles. So to, this, to me, this image is done now. All right. Well, we will look forward to coming back and seeing what you have done with some other stuff. In the meantime, I see that the picture that Ricardo is working on has substantially changed from last we looked. So we are in Photomatics right now. Oh, okay. Here's where the picture started, and we're basically tone map. I, I created a plus two and a minus two, and I'm tone mapping the men. I didn't really need to do that. Photomatics would have taken one raw. But I'm kind of just playing around. Yes, yes. Like you were saying, you've uh, you, this is your approach to photography is kind of like the editing, and that you uh, a lot of experimenting. That's right. Exactly. Uh, anything else? I've I've never been in Photomatic, so this is a first look for me. Though we okay. can't see the text obviously very well back home, so you might have to say what's going on. Yeah, but um, I don't really know what I'm doing. I just began kind of going through Trace um, videos on Photomatics. Just begun. So, I, you know, just some very basic edits. And I'm going to try to get the highlights correct on the face oil cap, and then I'm going to use Photoshop to probably just bring down the shadows that are not quite right to finish this off. And then I'll do the sky later in probably in um, Lightroom. Nice. Uh, for those uh, watching back home, I did uh, put my uh, my lovely self back on the screen so you can see me. I've got my, uh, this is official, this is about official as get. I've got a tie on, 
college shirt. Let's get down to business. All right. Okay. Hey, look, we have a, uh, a change here. Randall has moved on to another picture. Yes, I have. I've, I'm kind of doing a little bit on each one. Kind of. Okay. It seems it always seems easier for me Wait. to just get a little bit, little ways in the one, a little ways in the other. See how I like it. Come back to it. I uh, I ran the mountain through Photomatics. Nice. And that's. Yeah, uh, I might I might touch up a bit. Um, other than that, I did a quick little. I'm gonna go back to it still, but a little desaturation, a little warmth to the girl on the runway. And I went the opposite way and gave a little more tilt to the to the bride kicking her feet on the stairs. I haven't added any colors, just the crop. So now now they got that set. I'm gonna think about what I want for that. But I kinda like the I kinda like the angled crop on that one. Now is this would you say this is pretty similar to what you normally do? Um your own pictures? Ye- um, as far as jumping around, yeah, or yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, because I'd like to, I feel, almost, I, w- I want to like make sure it's right before I'm done, and I feel the best way to do that is to look at it multiple times, you know, a second look, a third look, yeah, a third look, maybe fourth. So with having yeah. with having six pictures, I'm able to hop between, and then you know maybe I go back to it and I realize, ooh, I didn't like that too much. I'm going to do this, and then I'll see how I like in a few minutes. All right. Well, there, there's quite a few. If we'll stay on this one of the little girl, there's quite a few things in that history there. Uh, can't read it too well. Um, uh, what do we yeah. got? Um, uh, what do we got? Um, the biggest things, I think, are um, I desaturated it a bit. Um, brought the white balance a little, a little hotter just to be able to do that with the less colors. You don't run into that. Uh, Played with the luminance and the colors a little bit, added a little bit of a vignette. Uh, that's well, you know, pretty standard thing so far. But well, I see over here. I see uh, Shirley has been jumping around from picture to picture too. Is that somewhat your style? You've been uh, you've been moving from uh, picture to picture, just kind of try things out. Yeah, I mean, so this is my first time using Picasa, and it's pretty interesting. So um, it's set up pretty cool. There's like five major tabs, and if you start with the first one, it kind of helps you guide the process in which you should be editing the photos anyway. So you may want to make sure the composition looks right. So that's why the recrop is one of the first buttons. And then if you have a landscape, you might want to make the horizon straight where the straight button is. And for portraits, there's the red eye button, which for the little girl, it didn't really apply. Of course, there's the I'm feeling lucky button, which is kind of entertaining to use. Oh, yeah? And uh, the auto contrast for, well, you're spot on on the exposures for most of them. What was that? So the I'm feeling lucky just uh, picks one of those and gives it to you? Um, I ha- I didn't use it, but you can try to hit it, and then it'll just do a quick fix for what it thinks it might be. Okay. So for the little girl one, um, I started with a recrop because I wanted to get a tighter view of her and focus on her and her expression and what she might be feeling in, in the environment. And it was pretty straight enough, so we didn't have to straighten the photo at all. And her eyes are great. There's no red eye in it. And uh, so after the first tab, you can move to the second tab. And so you go on to the lighting. So there's th- four options. The first one's fill light, which uh, you can move the slider around. And then there's a highlight. And there's actually a li- uh, button for highlights where it actually figures out what the best lighting could be. Okay. And there's shadows, which uh, didn't really need much of for the girl. And then the color temperature, you can make it look a cooler feeling or a warmer feeling. And since, you know, it's a little girl, a warmer looks, you know, a little bit softer and cuter. So now this picture was... And then the next tab, you've got the fun tab. So you can figure out which kind of look you want. There's the sharp, the sharpen button, and then there's the sepia. Right? So we've got we've got a decent delay between the two of us. It's like we're talking to a a reporter in the field. <laughs> and then there was that. And then there was the flushing. <laughs> Whoa. 
Nice. A memorable <laughs> moment. Of the play. Who was that? Was that you, Ricardo? That was not me. No, that was that was me. I got a bathroom right next to my uh, room, room here. So. Yeah, like <laughs> a little added, added touch. With you in there. So when we go to you, Shirley, we're gonna we're definitely gonna give you a little bit of uh, of time to just kind of talk through through some things because the back and forth, you know, is a little bit more delayed. So we'll just kind of let you let you talk about a few different things. But uh, as I look here, you know. Like my my first thought is uh, how is that uh, you know the the sharpening in in Picasso because uh, and do you even want to do it? Do you want to go with the soft look or uh, and stuff like that? And uh, I guess I'll say ten over and out so that you know that I'm done. Here. <laughs> yeah. So for this photo, it's actually started off pretty well to begin with. I sharpened it just a little bit just to see. Uh, test the system a little bit, um, maybe a couple stops, you just hit the button once, and then I gave it a glow, so it kind of undoes that, but also g gives it a softer light around her, and evens out this sharpening effect on the photo. Now, I will say for those maybe uh, watching and viewing in, uh, uh, and there's a this is going very nicely. I, I, don't, I didn't know if I even needed a trial version. Maybe... Maybe we'll call it even an official version, an official version without uh, that has not figured out uh, the prize situation or the voting situation. If anyone uh, has any uh, any ideas on the voting situation, we used to do this live. We did this a couple of times live here in Utah, where people would come all to the same location. Here at a local camera store, we'd have everyone at a table, and we'd have maybe 20 other people coming to watch them. Uh, and they'd wander around the tables and see what everyone is doing. There was no commenter, commentator like myself, uh, but at the end, we gathered all their images together. We used a, uh, a, a projector. We projected them and uh, took in just like three by five cards to everyone and said, okay, for image number one, who, what did you think was best? Great. Uh, image number two, great. And... and I think we even tried doing, you know, top three. Like, you know, what's your your top three? And in this case, we'll we'll have to figure out a way that'll work, very centric, perhaps, to Google Plus, and see where we go from there. But uh, if you'd like to share this, uh, we have still got another uh, twenty or so. Where did when did we start? Uh, it was seven. So we've got uh, just about. We've got 30 about another minutes. thirty-five minutes. We are halfway done, almost two minutes to halfway, and uh, and and we're going to get a really good feel for what we can get done in an hour. Uh, maybe the competitors can let us know that no, I could have easily done ten, or I, or it was hard for me to even do one. You know, we'll let them let them tell us, and uh, there's definitely going to be different styles and different strategies, perhaps. Perhaps adding more pictures will add it. A different level to this strategy as well. Okay, so let's go back. Um, uh, Mark was on this picture for a little while, and I, I've been meaning to ask him uh, how that Benton Hot Springs picture is going for him, or how it yeah. went. Yeah, I've, I've just about finished that, Scott. What I did is I, I did most of the work in Lightroom, really not very much. Um, and then I've just saved, the, I've done a con conversion to a JPEG, and I just got finishing opening it up in a digital photo professional because I like the uh, clone tool in that better than uh, Lightroom, and I have just finished uh, cloning out a couple things I didn't like, and now I'm about to import it back into Lightroom. All right, then. That sounds good. I've never actually used that software and honestly never even heard of that that's software. The, uh, that's the Canon software that comes with the cameras. Okay. And, and, uh, and is all I used for four years until I started using Lightroom about a year ago. Well, how did it react? Did it uh, have any problems working on this uh, Nikon image? Well, actually, I was working on the JPEG. Oh, okay. So did, what yeah. do you... I did the, I did the raw conversion in Lightroom, and then just opened the JPEG in a DPP, cloned out just a couple of things, and now I'm moving on to my third image. 
Sounds great. All right, we're, we're headed back over here to Ricardo, who is uh, apparently looking through to just double check to see how his uh, HDR image went out, right? Am I correct? Touching yeah. out to make sure it looks uh, not too uh, crazy, right? No, I think I'm pretty much done with it. What were, what were you looking for when you were zooming in? I just wanted to see um, how much noise I still have, and I didn't really check it at the beginning to see if you had dirt on your sensor. But your sensor is pretty clean, because I don't see too much dust. On well, it did help that I did shoot it at 1.6, so you'll you'll never really see dirt at, uh, if you shoot at 1.6. <laughs> And you can see here, like, the progression. You know, this is the original image. Okay. And this was the first tone mapped image. Okay. And then I touched it up in Photoshop by blending some of the layers back in. And then I ended up with this. And finally, I messed around with the sky a little bit in Lightroom, and that is the final, that's the final image. All right. So I have okay. one, two, three done. I, I was talking to someone uh, last night that was uh, showing some of the pictures from Yosemite, and he's like, I am not a fan of the little uh, jet trails. What are they called? Com trails? Uh, Con trails. Yeah. I mean, you can't avoid them in, in Yosemite because it's like so many planes go through there. Yeah. Okay. So I have three images done. You know, I did uh, the silhouette. Okay. You and brought him back quite a bit more on that silhouette, didn't you? Yeah, I actually kind of liked seeing them, and I really messed around with the colors in the sky. Uh, I, they were so vibrant already, why not punch them even further? All right. Because the original image, you remember, it looks like this. Yes. Right. So I like bring out the, the colors, what did you find that uh, helped bring out the colors the most? Um, we can actually see what I did. Um, Looks like you had saturation going. I pumped it up like a plus 50, so it, that's pretty high. And then clarity up a lot, too. And I mean, the recovery slider is up to 87 in this case, which allowed me to bring him back. All right. Yeah. And in Jarvis style, I brought in fill light, too. Did you do anything in HSL with the colors? The hue, uh, saturation, luminance? Yeah, you know. Or, or collective corpuses? I don't know how to use those sliders yet. All right. So maybe in another hangout, we'll learn how to use the HSL sliders. Well, good. <laughs> you might just do that, indeed. And oh. this is the, bl the black and white that I've done. This is, this is done, too. Yeah, so you worked that in, in uh, Silver Effects? Effects? Is that this correct? Pretty much all done in Silver Effects, yeah. And did you, uh, when you brought it back into Lightroom, did you, uh, did you have to do anything afterwards? Nah, it's pretty much done. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I want to I want to jump on over here back to Shirley because I see her on the stars pictures. We'll give her a moment to uh, explain what she's decided to do. Right. So I'm looking at the stars. I just got to it. I'm still trying to figure out the sliders to figure out which one's the best way to, you know, process this one. Uh, started with the first tab. The Composition looks awesome, so I didn't crop anything. I wanted to keep the tree and the mountain there and the edge pine tree up in the left side. Uh, there was no straightening involved because there's no clear horizon and there's no people, so we don't need the red eye in there. And we did a little bit of auto contrast to, you know, be able to see the difference between the color of the branches and the sky and the stars and the mountain, and a little bit of auto color just to see what, what it would do, and it did it pretty nicely. Went to the second tab. Uh, so that second tab is the lighting, and you know, uh, the fill light kind of upped it a little bit so we can see more details in the mountain, okay. and uh, a little bit more highlights so you can kind of see the stars okay. and, and the sky, and a little bit of shadow so you, it also uh, brings out the detail not only in the granite cliffs, but also you'll see the silhouette of the uh, foreground trees a little bit better. And uh, I'm going to continue on with the other tabs. Great. When you are editing pictures, are you thinking more like this is going to go on Google Plus, this is going to go to a client, this is going to go on a wall as a 40 by 60 large metal image for people in their millionaire mansions? What, what is more your thought process when you're going through <laughs> things? 
Right, so when I'm editing for real for my photos, I try to make sure that everything goes on, like it's postable on the wall. And, uh, yeah. And, nice. and then Google Plus. Yes. Which is obviously as important as the 40 by 60s that you put on the wall, of course, right? Right. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, we haven't visited and checked in with Scott for a little while, and we, we find him back in Photoshop. Well, now, which version of Photoshop is this, Scott? This is 5.5. Uh, 5.5. Five. 5 All right. What, did anything change up from 5 to 5.5? Uh, uh, some of the enhancements are, I don't know, minor, more the... Uh, some of the 3D tools and so on. I don't know. Um, I'm I'm really waiting for six. Lots of cool things in six. All right, so I did a lot of stuff to this image. Um, that are, that's pretty weird. Uh, this is the original image, and and this is uh, uh, a little lag here. What kind of computer are you on to be uh, running through all this? I'm on a six-core Xeon processor with uh, 24 gig of RAM. It's uh, a Dell Scratch and Dent. Get them up uh, outlet dot uh, DellOutlet.com, and it was 1,500 bucks. And it's got a Quattro 4000 card in it. It's an amazing machine for what I paid for it. Now, does uh, the video card uh, make a pretty big difference in Photoshop? Yeah, absolutely. This is a GL compliant card, so it's got two gig of RAM on board and it handles nothing but the GL pipeline. So it's much faster than a regular gaming card, even. So. So what does GL stand for? Uh, GL is the old uh, it's, it's the method for three D manipulation. Um, it's the old graphics language. Basically, it's from the open three D universe. So when people were doing three D manipulations, uh, OpenGL was pretty much the first method and still one of the more popular methods doing 3D manipulation uh, that gives the, the graphics processor on the card a lot more oomph uh, for, for moving things. And now Photoshop uh, 5 and 5.5 5 pay attention to GL acceleration on the card. So you're, you're, a lot of your CPU doesn't have to do some of the heavy lifting for zooming uh, where it used to have to do a lot of that. Uh, so on this image so far, one of the first things I did is I replaced the uh, the blue channel uh, with the green channels. So this ups the contrast of the image substantially without dropping any pixels or removing data. Uh, so I basically altered severely uh, the way that those look. So if you look at just this, for instance, this is what the uh, the blue channel replaced with the red channel, and this is where the uh, uh, where I would typically replace the blue channel. Most most cameras have two green sensors, one red and one blue. So you're blue channel will almost always be your noisiest channel. And because there's a lot of sky in this image, the first thing I did was to replace the blue channel with the green channel because there are twice as many green sensors. So I end up with a, clear, a cleaner sky, less noise, and then uh, did it again, uh, basically, and then kind of worked my way up there to add uh, different saturations. You see I pumped up the, uh, the changed the, the tone of the grass uh, on the side of the mountain there, added some contrast to that as well sharpens substantially the, um, the effect uh, around and in the, uh, in the crevices of the, of the uh, peak here using kind of a, a strange method where you take a, uh, a vivid light layer and invert it against the regular layer and then if you blur that layer you end up with a difference between the two. So if I go back to my Glossian blur here and I change it, you can see what it does to the sharpness or the contrast in those areas. So it's kind of like a micro sharpening, but it doesn't dirty the image like a typical sharpening does. So I use it on um, areas where there's a lot of really neat uh, undulations, like this uh, rock here I think is really kind of interesting. So i use a much higher setting than, say, on the wedding dress. In the first image, I used about a two setting, which is much more relaxed. And then after that, dodge and burn up the top and uh, add the additional contrast, hue saturation, and then finally a dodge and burn layer here. Um, to kind of uh, top off. This is the uh, Don Jaburn layer here. It looks like this. So right, so my, my question to you, Scott, is is uh, this is a lot of stuff you've got done pretty fast in Photoshop. How long you've been working with Photoshop? 
uh, years. <laughs> where, did you, where did you learn all of this stuff? Uh, self-taught. Self-taught. Yeah, basically just playing with it, working with it every day, and, and learning what you can and can't do with it. A few videos, though, I'm sure, here and there. Oh, yeah, those are always helpful. <laughs> yeah. well, that's great. Yeah, and I know that you do some of these little hangouts, uh, showing some of your editing. So you're an old, old hat, old pro. We're gonna have to have you uh, definitely back on as a, uh, as a now Iron Chef. They have uh, different. They are Iron Chefs, so we might be Iron Photographers or something like that. Yeah, that'd be fun. I think that'd be a blast. Scott, I've I've been in a couple of Scott's um, <coughs> hangouts where he's retouched some of the uh, fashion work that he does. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not I'm not a Photoshop user, but um, I learned quite a bit about just stuff to look for and um, you know how he how he works a lot on the face on the face and what to look for in the eyes. He's He's really a uh, very strong talent when it comes to uh, that type of retouching. And that's just a couple times that I've uh, spent with him. Well, thank you, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll gladly have you back any time. And, uh, and uh, you know, we've, we've got, this is obviously our little uh, trial period to find our iron photographers. And, uh, you know, for the, for the official competitions and stuff. And... Uh, I'm not. These are aren't official competitions, but for the the mega awesome ones. Now, don't they have like uh, tryouts for Iron Chef type things, Scott? Right? I would imagine so. I I, I haven't. I, I actually watched the Japanese one. I think it's more funny than the uh, oh. American version. But yeah, they do. They do quite a bit to try and figure out who they want to have on. And then you've got your your main Iron Chefs that you know are the the top of their heap, but I, I think it's, uh, in this case, if there's so many talented people on Google+, Plus, that, you know, it would be difficult to find. It'll be, uh, yeah, I think the format of the show, though, is real appropriate for this. It's a lot of fun. It'll be, uh, it'll be fun when they, when they join in on the show and we introduce the secret ingredient. <laughs> yeah, they, Automotive, or, or babies, or animals, and, uh, and they have to uh, go with it. So we can we can uh, definitely do some really fun stuff here. All right, uh, let's go back. Uh, Ricardo is is zoomed in on a picture here. So where are you? you are in Lightroom? You're where are you at? I'm in Color Effects, and uh, I don't really do a lot of portraits like these, like with. Uh, with artificial light, and uh, so I wasn't really sure what to do. So I kind of went for a little, uh, I would say cliche and slapstick, and I made it like very glamour glowish sort of thing. Can, you can see the glow up here on the top right and left. Yes. And on her. So I don't think this is something you would do as a wedding photographer because it's it looks a little funny. I think a little hokey, but but it's processing. <laughs> yeah. Now I think you're going to win the prize for having the most uh, different softwares open tonight, right? <laughs> We've had Lightroom and uh, Silver Effects and Color Effects, and uh, if I'm, you had the HDR software as well. Photomatics, and I did a little Photoshop. And a little Photoshop. Who's beat that, Mark? What, how many how many different software have you used tonight? You were you were using I've that only, one. I've only used Lightroom, and then I use DPP just for a quick clone. Okay. That's it. So really, everything I'm doing is in Lightroom. Okay. Uh, Helen joined us back in. Were were you able to keep on working on the pictures a little early while you were uh, off air? I've got a handicapped computer, but yes, I did. I, I've been working on this one. I'll tell you what I did with it. Okay. Yeah. I I corrected I corrected as much as I could uh, light and I I in increased vibrance and stuff in Lightroom in this picture, and after um, I I made a virtual copy and edited it in um, Silver Effects for the black and white. So I made a black and white version that looks like this. I don't know if you can tell. 
And, and what I've done now is I've created an image that has both the color version and the black and white. I put the black and white on top and I'm blending it into a luminosity layer. And it's giving it a, an oomph which has nothing to do with HDR, but it, it, it makes it sharper. It gives it a really interesting tonality. The colors are not oversaturated. I really like they look natural. And uh, I'm sort of happy with what I've done right, here, right now. Oh, great. No, it looks, it looks great. Um, and what are you thinking now? We've got a... We've got 15 more minutes. Are you you thinking to, to jump, try another one, or uh, just kind of uh, focus on this one? I think I'll be really if I get to save this. <laughs> All right. Well, best of luck on the computer, and uh, we will jump back into <laughs> Shirley, who is, who is, what? Whoa. We've got some different things. She's going through a bunch of different pictures here. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, She's so getting... one of my favorite photos to edit using Picasso is actually this landscape one. I started off with the first tab again, and I recropped it to get the composition that I kind of liked. It gives it a more of a long panoramic feel where your, your eye goes left to right. For, you could either go towards the road or you can rest by the tree on the right side. And then after that, uh, did some auto contrast, which it did quite beautifully. It turned it into this because I thought uh, it could use a little bit of that. And then went over to the second tab. Uh, didn't really have to do too much with the lighting because the contrast did pretty well. And uh, that's pretty much the major things that, uh, the, and the fun tab. Uh, Is it actually it called bit. the fun tab? Yeah, it's the tab, at the, the fifth tab, it's called even more processing and useful image processing. So you have all these fun effects to put on it, whether it's like boost, I think that's like increasing vibrance and saturation, soften it, add in vignette, a pixelate, a focal zoom, pencil sketch, so fun things like that. And for a photo like this, I wanted to go a little bit more conservative and keep to the tone of the true uh, image. So I just gave it a little bit of a punch of a color in the photo. Okay. Uh, let's see another one real fast. What, what else did you do on another picture? Over. <laughs> Uh, so this is another one of my photos that I had fun using Picasso for. It was the one of the guy with the boom mic, I think it was, and I really loved his silhouette and really wanted to emphasize that. So I went over and looked at the effects, and I thought this would be a good photo to apply the fun effects on. And so uh, if you hit the neon, you get this effect here, and you can cho cool. choose what color you want. And I thought red you know, does well with the vibe of the photo. Uh, he's turned to the side. It's just a great profile of him. You got the logo. And it's it just is, like powerful, you know. He has a huge stick and a huge mic, a camera on the other hand, <laughs> listening to music and just dialing with his shirt. Uh, I know him pretty well. He, I think he'd get a kick out of this picture. <laughs> I think that's really cool. <laughs> this would be like the, the Facebook profile picture. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's head on over uh, to Randall, who's probably gone through the pictures now. How many times? Ah, uh, uh, I've I've hit about each of them probably three, four times now. Um, I'm working on the the landscape shot of with the the tree and the building and the mountains. Um, kind of trying. I ran it through Photomatics through the HDR, so that's kind of like new school, but then I'm kind of desaturating it, giving it kind of that orange sepia tone as well, so I'm kind of combining the two, trying to find a happy medium between, you know, looking between like an old western shot and a, I don't know, like a, like an overly, not an overly processed, but definitely a processed HDR shot, so been kind of working on this one for a while, though. I ran it through the Photomax, and I don't, I don't know if you can check it. I don't know if you can see on here, but the um, sky got really pixelated, which I'm not liking too much. So I might just head back to the original at some point, or 
I don't really know. But that's I that's what I'm working on. Pretty. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong. You were you were in Lightroom the whole time. Is that correct, or did you? Jump um, I just just Lightroom and Photomatics. Photomatics. That's right. That's you did Photomatics mm -hmm. for. For just, for the, just for that one image? Um, for this one and for the the HDR here on yeah. this guy here. But those are the other than that. Um, a reason I kind of took the same approach Ricardo did to the silhouette, trying to trying to make it an unsilhouette a bit. But I got some terrible chromatic aberrations around the outline of the guy. But I, it's not visible at this view. But when you zoom in. Oh yeah, I got those too. I just ignored them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they're, they're pretty. They will be. They will be on Google Plus uh, at only seventeen hundred, and I don't know if people will be able to. Zoom yeah, I don't. Them, so. No, I. I think on on, on Google Plus, I think it'll be just fine. Great. Okay. Uh, let's go. Let's go over to Mark for a second. Uh, he'll have to unmute himself. I. There was a little bit of echo coming in, so. But. If you want to unmute yourself, Mark, and uh, we'll, we'll tune back in to what you're what he's doing here uh, with the picture at near Yosemite Falls in Yosemite. He's in Lightroom. He's working on a uh, working on uh, making it a black and white image. Okay. If he unmutes himself, we'll be able to hear him. How's that? There we are. You're back. Sorry. Okay. For that, we did have a little bit of feedback, so we, so we muted you for just a little bit. <laughs> no problem. So I'm on. Uh, I'm on image number five. It looks like I'm going to get five done. Uh, right now, I'm working on the nighttime shot. I have uh, decided to convert it to black and white. I've cropped out some of the stuff that I thought was a little bit distracting on frame left. Yeah, the uh, tree. Use it. Sorry, yeah, the tree. Oh, I'll go uh, back. Used a graduated filter uh, on the lower portion of the image to bring up uh, some contrast. And right now I'm just about ready to go in and uh, work on the curves a little bit and see what else I can pull out of this conversion. All right, that sounds great. Um, I want to jump over real fast. It looks like Scott's doing something a little interesting. And I did want to let everyone know that we are at uh, at the 40. And so that means we have seven minutes left, and we will end exactly on time. Pens will be up right at 12.47. <laughs> Test over. Turn in your number two pencil. Make sure all the T's are T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, and we will be ready to get them uh, uh, exported, uh, zipped up, and sent to me so we can put them on on the galleries. But uh, Scott, uh, so what's going on? You were uh, were you making a little mask there? Is that what you were doing? Yeah, one of the coolest tools in Photoshop that no one ever uses anymore, but it's been there since like version three is down here. It's the Quick Mask tool. It's right below the black and white or the front and rear selections or color tools and allows you to paint with a brush to create a selection. So as you're working, uh, let me invert that so it's a little easier to see. It's also your Q key. So if you hit your Q key, now you can use your brush to create a mask by painting. Well, what's cool about it is you can paint at uh, a lower opacity. So if you want to paint partially, to partially select something, you can paint it in at several different, you know, you, could, you can go over it and over and over it, and then when you're done, hit Q again, and it'll turn it into a selection. Uh, so it's a pretty powerful tool. I mean, undo all that stuff. And what I was doing here is I'm going to borrow the sky for these areas. Now, I, I would take more time with this and do this differently, but I'm basically just going to uh, create a dupe of everything that's on here um, for this level, for this layer, I should say, move it into place again. 
and I've done is I've stacked the deck to uh, to win here. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, from here, so this is out of Lightroom. So get rid of the whole Hurley. We, we can't use it. It's got the little uh, logo on there and everything. So, so now we just uh, improved upon the whole outdated. You jarvified it. So what I did here, uh, slightly. I might say that it's uh, now a little bit jarvy mm -hmm. <laughs> There you go. Next time I'm going to have to do some of you there. Uh, curve the sky, uh, each each layer independently to kind of pop it the way that I want to pop it. Mm -hmm. uh, remove the Hurley, add the Jarvie, and then added a bloom, added another bloom on top of that, uh, this, and then this more this bloom here has a color shift to it. So uh, just to kind of add a little more interest uh, to where the sun presumably might be for if, this alien planet. That if you want to uh, stack so cool. even more, what I might suggest, can I make it I, I, I don't make any <laughs> suggestions, but this is more of a request. Can you put an eye and a heart right above that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we probably could. He will love that, as in find it funny. <laughs> um, yeah. I would love it. How much time we have left, Scott? Uh, you're down to the four-minute mark. Oh my god, mm. I can make it, I can do one more. So there will be no more edits after, in, in four minutes. You will be allowed to to do uh, exporting after that point in time. And uh, and emailing and zipping up is uh, export, zip, and email. And uh, what we need for the export is uh, smaller versions. We don't need the full size files, except Obviously, the I love Jarvi, you know. So that I, no, I don't need. <laughs> I can use it small. I don't. I don't need a picture of him up on my gallery. This is great. Um, I'm gonna jump over real fast back to Randall. I know that he's been going through these pictures again and again and getting different thoughts. Yeah. Randall, have you, have you decided uh, going back through that you didn't like if you scratched anything and gone back? Um, this the one of the bride is the one I keep coming back to, and I don't know really what I want to do to it. I guess I'm running out of time, but the other ones I I felt pretty pretty certain that's how I wanted to end up with them, and this one is there's just still there's something about it that it doesn't seem quite finished yet, and uh, I don't know. I'm thinking I want to lighten up her feet or something because the vignette came in a little too close to her feet here, so that's what I'm. Oh, it's too much. Um. Well, I know yeah. we're hitting the crunch time, so keep on, keep on going on. You gotta give us a one minute mark, okay? One minute. We're we're at two minutes. I'll let you know. All right, thank you. I, I'm gonna join. I'm gonna hit uh, Helen. He, she's back in. Uh, for the ending here, and as soon as she's able to get her screen back and shared, oh no, she's got it shared. She's, she's opening up Photoshop. If you if you're trying to do a uh, brand new here on Photoshop, you might be a little bit late, but unless you get it all done already. All right, Mark. Yes. We've got a, a different color there. Yeah. I um. Uh, I wanted her dress yellow. Ha! Huh. And and why is that? I don't know. The uh, it seemed a little off. Uh, so I just let me see what I did here. Uh, yeah, I jacked, um, I actually lowered the temperature a little bit, um, gave it a square crop to take away, I thought the, uh, the railings and the arch, although nice, uh, were a little bit of a distraction. Um, and then as I, uh, I have a quick comment, kind of work. we're down to the one minute mark, we have about... Uh, 30 seconds or so. Yeah. 
So I will, I will, I will uh, I'm going back to silent, I'm going back to my screen. We're going to show off some pictures. You guys finish it up and let you cheat. Uh, since I should have been silent about a minute or two ago and just kind of done the recap and, uh, and stuff like that. We're going over by, by one minute. So I don't think we started exactly at 1247 minutes with zero seconds. So, so let's see here. That's okay. Okay. I'm, I'm done. I'm going to do a. Yep. I feel, I feel good. Obligatory countdown with a 10. 10. 9. Eight, seven, <laughs> six, five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Mouse is off. <laughs> or something like that. We are done. <laughs> okay. Uh, and before before we tune out here, uh, let's do some, some closing closing words and uh, and some and some thoughts. And we're going to review through the pictures. Let's everyone move to uh, image number one. If everyone could go to image number one, which is uh, the El Capitan. Uh, here they are already viewing. My picture as the un original zeroed out version, and uh, we're going to go and look at a few other versions of it. We have Shirley Low with a uh, distinct look. What would you call this look? Sure it's kind of like an Instagram look, but I mean, I know I in the beginning I said I wanted everything to be as close as the original as possible, but the settings and the effects were so much fun, I ended up playing with it a lot. Yep, so we, 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 we saw you transition to that, and I, I enjoyed it. Helen, this is your final version. We, <laughs> we looked at this one quite a bit earlier, so, uh, so we know a bunch about it. Uh, we're going to go over to Scott's, which we've also uh, spent a bit of time uh, viewing. And here we are. Uh, Ricardo has his version in a, uh, a slideshow on, a, on his Apple. And Randall's version here, which we know that he did some uh, uh, photomatics, correct? Yeah. And then Mark... Mark, did you do photomatics on this, or was it all? I did not. That's just all done in Lightroom. All right. Uh, let's move over to the second image, the stars. Did did everyone work on this one? Yes, yep. I did. I did not. Okay. So Mark did a black and white version. Yep. Ricardo, did you work on this one? That was the quickest edit I did. I think it took me two minutes. Okay. And... Uh, Scott, did you? I did not. Uh, fun little quip on the first one, though. Uh, 890 meg is where this El Capitan ended. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it, does it does win there. Go ahead and uh, size that down a little bit. <laughs> he, gets, he gets the award for the biggest file. <laughs> Randall, now, did you work on it? Um, yeah, not too much. I just kind of went purple hues over blue, and that was... Not too much. You're talking to the king of not too much, so <laughs> no, right. no worries about that. And Helen, I don't know if you didn't work on that one. And Shirley, um, wow, we, I didn't, I didn't, we didn't view yours when you were working on this one, but it looks great. Okay. Uh, and let's go to the third one real quick and go over those. Mark, obviously you worked on that one. You're your favorite little location. Yeah, and you know what? I really didn't do very much to it. Do we see a little bit of a uh, fall coming back into the picture? Yeah, I just, I I really, uh, Scott, I, I really just did a couple really simple things here. I just added a real strong contrast 
and I cloned out the little blue, uh, whatever that the t- blue drop cloth was, or whatever that was in front of the store. Yes. And I cloned out I cloned out the satellite dish that was in front of the tree. Oh, that would have been a good idea. Yeah, that's oh, my great idea. idea. Yeah, and that's, and that's all I did to this image. Okay. I mean, any more time to clone out the satellite dish. Randall, Randall went with a somewhat of a sepia with some uh, definite blues still coming back in. Yep, yep, kind of a, a split tone. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I did getting too much blues was really pushing the. However, I ended up with that pixelated sky. Oh, okay. So I just kind of settled with the with whatever I had there. So I, I feel I feel pretty good about it. Though. Almost an infrared look to that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, the glowing almost. Yeah, I can see that. And and we know that Ricardo worked a bit on uh, Silver FX Pro to get his black and white image. I don't remember Scott working on this image. Nope. Okay. And uh, and that's the original. And here we have Shirley. That we know that she did a more of a panorama, cut it down a little bit. She looks like she boosted the contrast levels a little, uh, in saturation a little bit. Is that correct, Shirley? That's correct. All right, let's move to the next one uh, with the bride. Okay. Okay. Uh, we we first had started off watching quite a bit of what uh, Scott was doing. This is the first image that he ran to. Was, we, was that safe to say that this might have been the one you were more excited about? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this is the, exactly the kind of thing I like to do. I don't shoot weddings, but I do retouch for them. And, and I like I wanted this to look at the end like this could be on a wrapped canvas. You know, this is a. a painterly looking, the contrast of the bride is much brighter than, or, or much deeper than the contrast of the rest of the image. Uh, the, we, we, uh, we might the, have to talk after this, Scott. I might have to, uh, <laughs> have to talk about, about this. I, this is great. I want to know what, I want to know what the size of this puppy was. I never looked. Yeah, let's, let's take a moment. I'll figure wow, out. that is so awesome. <laughs> That's just ridiculously good. I don't, I don't. I can't see it. Oh, there it is. Nine hundred and eighty-three meg. Oh well, that's Ooh, much bigger. Nice. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> we always right. had several classes of people on this contest. Yeah, no, it, it's fun to see them all. I, your picture looks great. I, uh, I love it's a it. little uh, with running your software. It's a really a little hard to see like the detail in yours, Ricardo. I'm looking at yours now, but I'm I'm excited to see the final version up on Google Plus. Uh, because it looks great, and I know that we had uh, spent some time while you were working on these ones. So, uh, and we had spent some time with Randall and his. Uh, what would you say this? Yeah, what would you say, Randall, on this? Um, on this one, I would say this is about a sixty percent done photo. I had, I got the crop I wanted. I had the ink, you know, from. And everything, but the the colors, I just didn't quite get to where I wanted to get with that. But I feel I feel pretty good about it. Great. Um, and uh, and Shirley, with a similar uh, feel in that she did uh, change the colors a little bit on the dress, just like over here on on Marks, who just went off. Oh, there he's back. Uh, you both kind of uh, played, you said, nothing sacred, white dresses don't have to stay white. Right. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Shirley. Right. So, I mean, one of the things that struck me about her, the photo was her expression. And it it's very interesting because, you know, you see the brides have that generic smile plastered on their face. But she kind of has a slight smirk, slight resignation. I'm not really quite sure what it is. And then if you look to the right of her on the steps, it seems like there's lace. I don't know if it's torn from her dress or just something. So it, it kind of gives it a really moody feel. And I wanted to convey that sense of a deep emotion by, you know, having the colors not be the traditional white, but just kind of like a gritty, grainy, like green and yellow. She, she's like, you know, she just, she's looking at you and she wants you to feel what she feels. 
That, now, that was exactly what you were going to say, right, Mark? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> she stole the words well, right out of your mouth, right? You see, I, you and I looked at, uh, with a couple other people, we looked at these shots a few nights ago, and you told me a little bit about her background um, as being, uh, you know, describing her more as a, how will we get, call it, from kind of a country girl? Yes. That's how and, she uh, you know, Yeah, and I picture her, you know, driving a pickup truck, and as I started... As I started working on my crop, like I said earlier, I thought the I thought the banisters and the arch in the back were a little distracting, so I decided quickly I was going to square crop this. And as I brought it down and I started uh, kind of balancing the shadows, um, it just seemed it seemed more brown. So I thought the yellow I thought the yellow kind of contrasted with the brown a little more. So I just used um, uh, I just played with the colors in the dress a little bit and um, you know brought the yellows up because it's really not a completely white dress. I didn't really add any color. I just um, I just brought the saturation up in the luminous of, of the yellow. So just kind of the yellow and the brown contrast with her um, kind of her attitude. She definitely has an attitude in the picture. Let's move on to the next picture, so we finish it up here pretty soon. Uh, we're at the, the young lady, the young little girl at the bridal show, modeling off a dress, holding the flowers. And, uh, and it, did everyone get a chance to work on this one, or did anyone skip this one? I, I skipped it, Scott. Okay. Um, I finished it. So, uh, Mark's, here's Mark's version. We got a cropped in version. Yeah, I cropped this at uh, I cropped this at four by five and took the image. Uh, so we went from a portrait style image and now we're we're at a landscape style. Yeah, went horizontal, cropped at four by five. Um, All right. Just I thought I thought the overhead there was too much too much light overhead. Um, I cropped it. I didn't do a whole lot to this image, really. I I hit it pretty hard with some clarity. And then one little thing I did is I uh, took the adjustment brush and I just brightened her face up a little bit. And um, just kind of got my composition the way I wanted. The, there were some people to the left that were kind of distracting, and I just cropped it so most of the faces uh, that are here in the front were looking at her. And um, that was it. I only spent a few minutes on this image. Randall. There's Randall's image. It burned in on the corners a little bit. Uh, color also yep. desaturated. And uh -huh. uh, it's great. Yeah, a pretty a pretty basic edit. You know, just some minor minor tights here and there, there but yeah, light lightroom fun. You did a you did a good job shooting the original Scott, so <laughs> Oh shucks. <laughs> uh Ricardo's uh playing around and he decided to play in the black and white realm. Yeah, I, I decided to take off some of the bottom part. There was a, a line on, on the bottom side of the of the image that I didn't like, so I cropped it out and I actually kind of like the roof. I thought the roof tells a lot about the story. The roof, the roof was on. <laughs> you know, it gives it gives it gives the room a bigger look. And this is a little girl that's like walking down in, in this runway. She's really like holding her own in this really big space with a lot of people looking at her. And that's I think that's the, that's part of the story. So I decided to keep that big feel to it. Well, it looks great. And we'll move over to Shirley. Uh, I, she went with the very soft look, rounded corners even. Oh, well, that's cool. Now the question is, with the rounded corners, do they do they uh, show up when when they? I think it might show up in the final edit. 
It was one of the choices in the, the fun tab. And uh, one of the things that struck me when I saw this photo of the little girl, it seems like it might even be, not because of the quality, but because of the timeliness and the look in her eye. It's just so soft. Like, I could totally imagine this photo being in, like, her baby scrapbook. And so the rounded corners, like, bring back an era of, you know, like, vintage film snapshots right. of your childhood that she'll probably look yeah, back okay. on very fondly. And I just wanted to have a tighter crop because you see the background. It's kind of the contrast between her, the little girl, and, you know, the older girls behind her, especially with the woman in the down below in the red uh, sweater applying lip gloss. And it, they're facing different ways, and it kind of balances it out. She's looking to the future. The woman's looking to the past, and they're kind of, you know, glancing at each other, crossing paths. Really low getting philosophical with us. Oh, oh yeah, really. <laughs> This is great. <laughs> love it. I love, I love your description, Shirley. Yes. Okay. Aw, thank we'll you, the, Helen. The final image, and uh, at which point uh, we'll take your your commentary, your your quick, uh, how you felt about the competition, and and how you how you felt during that uh, that hour of high high stress, right? <laughs> Well, let's, let's quickly do this last image. I'm going to start with Randall real quick. We heard earlier what he uh, was doing, but I want to show his picture. All right. Um, basically, I tried to... The silhouette was cool. I tried to de-silhouette a little bit, bring out a little bit of the features, like the, the logo. I like the ring of the headphones, you know, his fingers on the mic. Um, it did pretty well. I got some... Some nasty, some nasty outlines around him, but I think uploaded on Google Plus, it'll, it'll look all right. Uh, the colors are pretty much the same. Try to tweak with them a little bit, but the, I guess basically it turned the blues to purples a little bit. And other than that, not too much. As far as the whole competition goes, it was. I think this was awesome. I. You know, just having you making, ready to come back as a uh, competitor next time. Bring oh, I would, I would do this every day. This is to it kind of changes the changes the attitude of photo editing. You know, it's just a maybe it's a time limit, not necessarily competing against others, but just trying to get these certain things done and just looking at everybody else's photos. It was, I don't know, it was great. It was fun. I really liked it. Uh, Ricardo, what do you think? How, do you, how did you feel going through this? Um, I'm a pretty competitive person, so I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed the the time challenge. It was, you know, there was definitely like an adrenaline thing going. You were trying to get a lot of different things done. Um, so I had a I had a really really good time. Did you do all six? I did all six. Ah, that's a competitor part of me. I'll force myself to do that. And uh, and speaking of all six, we here we go to someone that you did three, right? Or two? I did. I did three. You did three. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. You did Yosemite, uh, one of the Yosemite ones as well. But yeah, he redid the, the shirt, which is like really awesome. <laughs> well, I, I I thought that the the logo was barely there. I I actually really like uh, Randall's version quite a bit. I even the outline of the guy. I think I think taking this picture to an artistic level was it was screaming to be done because it was barely there. So anything you do to it is fun. So I really like just messing with it. And so I went with the collar, the, the headphone, and then and then uh, the uh, just a logo or just a, this. And I just took a black brush and kind of deteriorated uh, quickly uh, just around the heart, for instance, and, the, and the, the font to make it so that it was, you know, interesting. Well, well, I was intrigued with this one because this one wasn't a, a true silhouette like uh, some of my other pictures I was taking. Uh, and nor was it when I had my flash going to have him all well lit up, and it was kind of the in-between. I thought I'd throw it out there. One of the ones that, of the pictures I gave to him, was not included. I didn't work on this one, so. But it was still a good one. So not quite included, but a good one, and I wanted to see what, what happened with it. So this is pretty cool. And uh, Mark here. Uh, do, you didn't work on this one, did you? or Scott, I hit this one just for... We, we, we don't see your... Oh, there you are. Okay, yeah, yeah so you did work on this. All, all, no, I mean, if you want to call it that, I, all I did was hit the, hit the saturation in the bottom a little bit and uh, 
change the profile to vivid that um, I can't I kind of ran out of time and this I don't I don't that's I, about what I would do don't you think <laughs> yeah <laughs> so all right let's go to uh, Shirley she unmute and we, we talked about this a little bit earlier some of the the effects that a uh, Picasso lets you do and, and this little uh, neon one we all decided was a was a pretty cool effect and so I'm excited to see the comments on these pictures and uh, and uh, the plus ones as well of course Shirley what do you think uh, of of the event would you would you join us back again Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I felt like it was more about camaraderie than it was a competition. I mean, I usually take my time and I don't really edit under pressure. I kind of just let feel the photo and let the feelings just seep in while I edit. But this Did was really fun. Pressure? I liked like hearing different people talk about what they're doing. I'm sorry. Did you did you feel any pressure when Can you were going you? through this? Um, well, I was using Picasso, so in the beginning, I, I really didn't know what it could or couldn't do. So it, I felt more fun than pressure, just because it was so much fun to play with the effects, and I was pleasantly surprised with what you could do with those buttons and sliders. Maybe uh, I'll use Windows Paint next time or something. You know what? If we do this again, I'm going to use Creative Kit. Just Creative Kit. Do all online, you know, photo editing. That'd be fun, too. I can understand that. I need my Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, Creative Kit would sound pretty cool too. Uh, I just think actually it's amazing that you were able to do so many different things with these images, given using just a package like Picasso. Okay, guys, and uh, I am putting up. The yeah, I didn't know it was this advanced. It was. It's really fun to mess around with and just play with the settings. I, I've I've chatted. I've put in the chat your uh, my email so you can. Uh, uh, at the at the highest, uh, 2,000, and uh, so it's somewhere between 1,500 pixels and 2,000. I say we all just stick with one. Let's just all stick with one so that so that we know. Let's just say 1,800. Okay. 1,800 yeah. on the long side. So okay. Those are the exports. You want 1,800 on the long side. 1,800 on the long side, so that and people will. Okay. So people with uh, and and all, only the files that you actually uh, edited. So it doesn't matter how much you did, but as long as it doesn't look like the original, right. um, go ahead and send it my way. Or if you if you don't feel comfortable with one, you don't have to send it. It's fine. Like about eighty percent quality or hundred percent quality. Uh, yeah, I, I would just suppose a hundred percent. Oh, I usually go for eighty. Okay. Uh, out of Lightroom. Any, 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 that part's up to you. I just want it to be a consistent, uh, a consistent size. I, I don't. The quality is fine. However, you think that they'll be most well received. And uh, thanks. Is there any uh, last thoughts about the, about the showdown itself? No. Just I fun. hope it. Ha I hope it happens again. It was great. No, this is really fun. Thanks, really for, uh, fun. thanks for in inviting us, Scott, and for hosting. It was yeah. uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, I got more done than I thought I would because usually I take a lot of time on an image, but I I enjoyed the uh, the competition aspect and trying to get the six images done, even though I came up short on the last one. But um, yeah, I really I really had a great time. Thank you. Yeah, great job uh, with the yeah. hosting commentary, and everyone was r great p company. So. All right. Well, uh, yes, for the first ever online Google Plus photo editing showdown, this is Scott Jarvie here with my uh, guest editors tonight, the Iron Photographers, the Iron Editors, <laughs> Iron Editors, <laughs> boom, baby, <laughs> the Iron Editors. Uh, we bid you a good night. And good luck from Utah. This is Scott Jarvie over and out. So you want me to email?